Welcome to this video on penile injection therapy for erectile dysfunction. My goal for this video is to provide a brief overview of what penile injections are all about, some of the pros, some of the risks, and how to perform the injection safely. My name is Dr. Ryan Flanagan. I'm a urologist and a reproductive and sexual medicine specialist. So penile injection therapy or intracavernosal injections, ICI, common names that we use for this. It's a treatment for erectile dysfunction that involves injecting a small amount of medication into the erectile tube of the penis. Some of the common medications for these injections include Trimix, Bimix, Prostaglandin, and sometimes even Quadmix. After a man performs an injection, typically the erection starts within five to 10 minutes after the injection. Once we arrive at a, an appropriate dose, typically that erection is gonna last for about 30 to 60 minutes. The treatment itself doesn't rely on nerve function, so it's effective even if your nerves have been damaged. Perhaps you've had uh, a prostatectomy for prostate cancer and they weren't able to spare either of the nerves. The medication acts locally within the shaft or of the penis or the muscle and can simulate that muscle to respond to create an erection despite the nerves not being present. Typically, it requires uh, teaching either by myself in the office or a sexual health clinician. So how do injections work? Well, the medication works by stimulating increased penile blood flow within the penis, and it also stimulates the muscle within the penis to relax. That relaxation of the muscle then traps that blood in, and as the blood gets trapped, the penis expands both in length and width and gets more rigid until you arrive at a fully functioning erection. The effect is localized to the penis itself, so it does not typically cause effects elsewhere within the body. So what are the, some of the reasons why people use penile injections? So if you've tried other forms of erectile dysfunction therapies and they haven't been achieving the desired result, these might include pills, uh, Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, vacuum therapy, etc. Sometimes penile injections can be quite effective and a good option in this situation. If you're uh, prostate cancer survivor or other pelvic cancer survivor that there could be some compromise to the nerves that are sending the signal to create erections, then sometimes injection therapy can also be a good option for what's called penile rehabilitation. Some of the reasons that might not be a good option for you, if you have a difficult time with dexterity or movement of your fingers uh, to perform the injection itself, or if you have a significant history of a bleeding disorder that uh, could compromise the needle poke site. So how do you perform the injection? First of all, just make sure that you have all the supplies before you begin so you're not scrambling partway through the injection. This typically includes the injection medication. Typically you have to store this in the fridge, but you can take it out for the period of time of, of doing the injection. You'll need a syringe with a needle to perform it, alcohol swabs to clean the rubber on the vial as well as the skin, a sharps disposal container. Your pharmacy will typically provide this for you the injection information package, including the dosing chart. This is something that you're gonna receive from my office, or you may have already received it already. This provides all of the instructions on how to perform it, all the safety considerations regarding it, and how to manage a prolonged erection or one that doesn't wanna go away. It also includes a dosing chart to instruct you on how to make dosing changes in a safe manner. You also wanna make sure that you have some Sudafed pills available in the event that you have an erection that's lasting too long. It's also helpful, I find, to have a flat surface, whether that's a night table or a bathroom counter, to have all of your materials ready and make your injection very efficient and easy for yourself. I like breaking the injection into three steps. One, prepare the medication. Two, prepare your penis to receive the injection. And three, deliver the injection. So the first thing you're going to want to do is wash your hands. Make sure your environment's nice and clean so we don't have any risk of infection. So to prepare the medication, what we first want to do is use an alcohol swab and we want to clean the top of the vial. So on the top of the vial, there's a rubber pad there and that's what we're trying to clean. Ensure that there's no bacteria or contaminants on the top of that. Now, if we look at the syringe itself, we can see that there are numbers between zero and a hundred. These are called units. So this would be a hundred units if we had the plunger all the way down. And this would be 10 units. It goes in multiples of 10. 
and the smaller hash marks in this particular needle are two units. So two units, four units, and five units, which is a typical starting dose. When we measure the dose, the top end of the plunger is what we align with the number on the syringe. So this would represent five units, and this would represent 10 units. So it's a very small amount of medication that we're starting with. So now what we want to do is we want to pull the plunger back to the dose that we're interested in injecting. Because the typical starting dose is around five units, we'll align this to approximately five units. So just a small amount of air. Now we'll take the cap off exposing the needle. We can put the cap down. If you can see here, the cap has a flat, broader surface and a narrow area. The flat, broader surface is to allow for it to sand on its own to make it easier if we want to recap it. Next, we can take the medication, take the needle, and we insert it into the middle of the rubber. Now we want to inject the air into the vial because the glass vial can create a vacuum if we're only withdrawing medication and not introducing air. Next, we want to flip the vial upside down and this allows the air to go to the top. Now we pull back the syringe and draw the medication in. I typically like to push all the medication and air back into the vial, which usually gets rid of one of the small air bubbles. I then pull back again a little bit more than the dose of interest, and then I push it back forward to the desired dose of approximately five units. We check, there's very little with respect to air bubbles, so we can take the needle out, put the vial down, and we can recap our syringe. To recap the syringe, we can put the two ends together like this and close it, or like I mentioned, we can rest it down on the table and put the needle in uh, that way. So if the needle touches the outside of the cap here, it's best just to throw away the needle as it's now contaminated and put it into the sharps recycling and start over from scratch. So now that we have the needle back inside and it's protected, we can move on to step two. Step two involves preparing the injection site. So first of all, we want to avoid any of the nerves and vessel that run on the top of the penis or the urethra, the P channel that runs on the bottom of the penis. So our target zone that we want to inject is somewhere between two o'clock and three o'clock on this side and 11 o'clock and nine o'clock on that side. So in the middle of the shaft, along this entire side or the other side. Now, whatever your non-dominant hand is, I recommend to grab the head of the penis and pull it away from your body. Next, we want to clean the surface area that we're going to inject. So we grab an alcohol swab again, using our non-dominant hand, grab the head of the penis and pull it away from the body. Using your dominant hand, you're going to clean the entire side of this penis to make sure that there's no areas that are at potential risk of not being clean. Once you have this side of the penis clean, you can release it as long as it doesn't contact anything else. If you're not circumcised, to do this step, I recommend pulling back the foreskin to grasp the head of the penis and then doing the cleaning after that. Now we're ready for step three. So we've drawn up the medication. We've cleaned the side of the penis that we're ready to accept the injection so we can perform the injection. So what I recommend doing is taking the cap off of the needle. I recommend holding the needle with these two fingers and your thumb. This gives you the ability to place the finger on the plunger and it allows you to keep it off as well. Next, using your non-dominant hand, you're pulling the penis away from the body and angling ready to receive the injection. What I recommend just before you're about to perform the injection, keep this finger off the plunger so you don't have a risk of injecting the medication before you want it. With one swift move, I'd recommend inserting straight into the penis, insert the entire needle and not only part of it to ensure that the medication is gonna get delivered inside the muscle of the penis. Now that you're in, I'd place my finger on the plunger check back and look where the needle is entering the skin to ensure that it hasn't drifted out and inject the medication in. Once it's fully injected, the needle comes out, 
place it on the table and put pressure on the injection site for one or two minutes. Once this is done, you can relieve the pressure, take your needle and place it in the recycling sharps container. With respect to the erection response and dosing, our goal for the penile injection therapy is to get an erection adequate for sexual activity that's usable and you want to engage with. Typically recommend limiting the rigid erections lasting less than 60 minutes. If they last longer than this, it puts you at slight increased risk of something called priapism or prolonged erection that can be damaging to the penis. Dose adjustments in our program are guided by a dosing chart provided with your prescription and within the information package. The instructions on how to use this are within the package. If you have any questions, make sure you reach out to myself or our healthcare uh, provider team. Do not aggressively increase the dose beyond the parameters within the dosing chart, as it could definitely put you at risk for a uh, prolonged erection called priapism, which if it lasts too long can be damaging to the muscle and make it even more difficult to achieve an erection in the future. I mentioned priapism a few times. I think it's worthwhile to talk about this a little bit further. So priapism is an erection that lasts too long. Typically in medicine, we define this as an erection lasting four hours or longer. This can certainly happen after injection therapy as the medication is quite potent. In the event of priapism, if your erection is lasting longer than four hours, basically this puts your penis in a situation where it's not receiving enough oxygen and there's what's called ischemic changes or those cells within the muscle of the erection chambers are starving for oxygen. If this happens for longer than four to six hours, we think that some of these cells can start to die and the muscle become more fibrotic and less functional in creating erections in the future. It can also become quite painful. So let's first start off by talking about a few ways to try to prevent it. And then if we do develop it, we'll talk about how to manage this. So options to preventing priapism. So don't take more medication than the prescribed dose is one important factor. I wouldn't recommend combining it with any other erectile dysfunction medications, such as the PDE5 inhibitors like Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, et cetera. You can inject up to three times per week, but I would not recommend performing injections more than once in 24 hours. If you perform one injection and it doesn't seem to work well, I would not recommend performing a second injection right away. I would just hold off and wait 24 hours to try again. Now, if you do develop priapism, after one hour, the erection is still not going away. Typically recommend attempting to achieve climax, consider some gentle physical activity, walking up the stairs, having a cold shower, etc. If this still doesn't work, the erection is there after two hours, recommend taking four of the Sudafed tabs um, if they're 30 milligrams each, so a total of 120 milligrams. Now just make sure with your prescribing physician or myself ahead of time that this is a safe medication for you and you don't have any medical conditions that would make it unsafe to use the Sudafed. If the erection is still there after three hours, recommend going to your local emergency department, let them know the injection medication that you took, the time that you took it, and that uh, you're under the care of a, a urologist if you're one of my patients and hopefully they'll notify our team and go through the appropriate mechanisms to get the erection down. In this case, when the erection is lasting longer than four hours and you're at risk of the muscle being damaged, typically what we'll do is we'll either give an injection of a medication called phenylephrine, which in many cases will uh, allow the erection to go away. Um, and in some cases, we might have to stick a needle in to drain some of the blood from this to try to prevent any problems. In very rare circumstances, we have to do additional surgical therapies, but not in the majority of cases, if presenting within uh, close to the four hours. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like more information, feel free to visit my website or the YouTube channel listed here and my Twitter handle below. Thanks very much.